All right, you guys want some big kahunas here? Uh, this is a 1955 double die obverse. Would you mind if I take a video of this just to look no, at? Not at all. Yeah, uh, I mean, just I something. See, I go, I see something you don't see every day, you know? Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to the Cowtown Coin Show. Uh, also, going to be recording. Uh, so, just a few uh, interactions that we might have today. So, I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. And uh, without further ado, let's go inside. If I take a look at that box too, Frank. I appreciate that. Mind if I hunt through this stack too, Frank? Those S those SLQs? What's that? Those SLQs? I remember Yeah, well I remember you buy I'm buying those SLQs from you in Houston, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't keep them. Yeah, they just they were gone, you know. Bought that key date, uh, the oh, yeah. that rainbow one that you had. Yeah. And then I bought a 1917 D and 66. Yeah, that, those were out of the duplicates. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, I couldn't. I brought them both home and couldn't. They were just gone. Yeah. Well, the guy that bought the set died. Hmm. The guy that was there that bought the set from me. Hmm. It's a shame. Yeah, no kidding. These are all the SLQs you have left. Just these two are the only SLQs yep. you have left. Yep. Mind if I take a look at them real quick? That 60 PL looks interesting too. Uh, to my knowledge, this is the only uh, PL. In 60, probably. Only PL in any grade yes, of the dam uh, graded by NGC. It's wow. Not wow. That's nuts. Well, something like that normally go for <laughs> crazy for crazy crazy money. Well, what's different about that is the proof. Yeah. As opposed to a business strike that's thirty times. Wow. Definitely on the list, you know. Put it on the hit list. Exactly. What's your best one? Something like this right here. The cat label's free. 
How was Houston for you? It's good, very solid, very solid. I hasn't, haven't had a show since then, otherwise though, that would have been going and the others too. This is my first show right. since Houston. Now we're starting to talk. Yeah. Let's open the dialogue. Right. Thanks for letting me take a look at these. I'm probably too far apart on them. But yeah. Is there any other coins that you got out today, or is it just mainly these? Uh, this is all brought. Okay. Just so I know, you're not going to have my feelings on some of these like these. The most recent one sold for like thirteen fifty. Okay. So that's like, you know. Yeah. That's where I was like. I understand. The other stuff, you know. Yeah. But makes sense. I appreciate it though. You're certainly welcome. Well, we You got that quarter, Robert? I still got it this moment. Could be gone like the wind. Something like that go for normally. Well, that's 12. Uh, I know gray sheet and all that. That's not even, I mean, I'd get 13, 50 for it somewhere. But I'm going to ask you 12 for it. I'll give it some thought for sure. Appreciate you letting me. Yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. Probably pass on it for now, but I, how far off a of gray sheet would you be on it? Long ways. Long ways. He charged you that much up for it? He charged you that much up for it? Yeah. He said he'd take it to Long Beach. So he'd yeah. He could. I know he could. Probably could, yeah. Yeah, if it, if it was selling higher, I mean, if a lot of, all of them have been selling, like, round sheets, so that's where I was, like, I couldn't go that high on it, but it's still a pretty coin, you know, lots of toning, you know. I just keep it, I think, so. Yeah, it's a collector coin, you know. Thanks again. Any other interesting holders like these, Frank? Any other, just the uh, older nope. stuff? Which ones? Oh, those are Hans holding. Here are these. I'm interested in these. Okay. Twenty-five for the three. 
that's fine. Alright, 125. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I always like these interesting things. Mm -hmm. you, would you mind if I take a video of this just to look no, at? Not at all. Yeah, uh, I mean, just something. I see something you don't see every day, you know? Yeah. We all got dream coins, I guess. Alrighty. Hey, thank you again. Hey guys, just made it home from the show. I uh, found a few cool things, um, but also, uh, you know, have a lot of things to show you guys in this video. Uh, we haven't been traveling this past, uh, you know, almost all of New November. And then just starting into December, we found a few good shows like the Cowtown Show. So, I hope you guys enjoy what we have to show you today. And without further ado, uh, let's get to the light box. Hey guys, thank you for taking a look um, and watching this part this far along in the video. Wanted to show you guys some cool coins today. Um, basically, we got for a lot from the show, but then we've actually been doing a lot um, from home as well. Um, here is a nice coin that we picked up from the show, though. This is a nice 13, uh, 1932D, created VF35 uh, by Annex. Uh, overall, problem free coin has a little towing, uh, especially around the letters and the numbers. Um, you know, a decent coin uh, for, you know, your starter, uh, you know, key date, just like the 32D. Uh, we ended up picking this up from Frank. You might, might have saw, seen it in the video. Uh, you know, just a decent coin. Uh, we haven't been buying too many Washingtons unless they're beautifully toned or they're a better date like that. Um, here's something that I wanted to show you guys that's not, uh, we didn't get from the coin show, but we did pick up this week for the collection. This is a 1935D, graded, uh... I'm in state 64 by PCGS, and you can just tell off the bat that this color on this coin is insane. Um, and I ended up getting this coin for about 100 bucks in a trade. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit on this coin here. If, if you guys can tell about that, you know, that the, the beautifully tone, kind of that beautifully crescent around the bottom left, uh, around the date, and then there's this target toning around the rest of the coin. It's just, I mean, the luster on the coin as well is just... It's just a stunning piece, and when I saw it for the first time um, in hand, I knew I had to get it, and so I ended up buying this coin. I've been offered like three hundred some dollars for it, but it's just something that I uh, wanted for my collection, and I only buy the right coin for the right price. And when I get it super affordable like this, I set it aside. You know, um, the reason why most people get caught up in buying and collecting, and then they end up hurting themselves on the business side, is because they're paying almost full retail for a coin for their collection um, instead of getting a really good deal on a coin that they might want for their collection and then putting it away and so something like this is a candidate for the collection and I'm very happy about it up next uh, this is an actually interesting one this is a 1971D uh, Eisenhower dollar uh, graded um, MS65 by uh, PCGS I think this coin is a good uh, candidate for gold CAC and so I'm actually going to submit this coin I was offered like 300 bucks on it the other day um, but I don't really know what to think of that I think there's some value behind it so that's kind of why I'm uh, going to take a deep dive and see what happens with it um, overall though the, the reason why this might be more collectible is because uh, you know they were actually holding these coins in the late 80s in these rattlers and then um, Basically, in 1971, this coin was made. So, not many of these coins were sent into PCGS because they were just so modern at the time. And so, this is just something for you guys to think about. If you do find, like, a commemorative that was made in the 80s, or you find um, an Eisenhower made in the 70s that's in a PCGS rattler holder, they might be more expensive than what you think they are, and you guys might want to set them aside and do your proper research, because this could be a coin that you might be interested in uh, selling at a higher price. Up next, this is an 1833 uh, cap bust uh, dime. It does have some issues on the coin. It has some interesting peripheral toning on it. Um, 
you know, I, I've been buying a little bit of type stuff here and there just because there's been a few buyers that have been jumping all over those, and I really enjoy that. Um, it really opens opens me up into a new venue of uh, of coins for you guys to be to allow me to offer you, which I really appreciate. But you can really see uh, it's kind of an interesting blue toning in the in the over, uh, on the reverse background and in the obverse background. Um, Someone did screw up this coin on the face here. You can kind of see a little bit of scratches, uh, like someone dug it out a little bit. But still, I mean, the, what I was offered it to to me for and the, what I'm going to sell it for is just not something that's not comparable um, to a straight grade. It's something a lot less than that. So uh, just stuff like this, middle of the road stuff, ends up being easy to crack out and put in a typeset. And that's what I'm very uh, happy about. All right, you guys want some big kahunas here? Uh, this is a 1955 double die obverse, uh, grade AU55 brown by PCG by NGC. My apologize, my apologies. Uh, I keep just jumping over my words here, um, but as you can see, there's really nice doubling on the coin. Um, you don't see that every day, uh, especially you know nowadays. It's hard to find coins like this. I actually paid fifty dollars under gray sheet for it, which is surprising, um, but it has been pretty pretty easy to find coins like this as of recently just because you know the holiday seasons are coming up and people have different priorities in terms of collecting and and maybe covering some bills who knows um, but this coin is just stunning I, I like it a lot because of its rarity I've never actually owned a double die obverse before and then when I turn it over uh, you know it's it still has that nice kind of chocolatey brown feel to it you do see the circulation though in the fields there um, but Nonetheless, I'm, re I'm really happy with the coin overall, and I'm not really, you know, I'm not really inclined to sell it. You know, I, I post it on the website, but uh, whenever it sells, it sells. In the meantime, I'm really going to enjoy just taking a look at it every day. Up next, which will be interesting as well, is a 1972 double die obverse, and this one's going to be a little bit more hard to pick up here, um, but... It's not as, as dramatic in terms of doubling on the other one, but you do see in God We Trust has a lot of doubling on it. Um, Liberty has a little bit of doubling on it, and same same as the 1972 there. Um, it's almost like a slant to the bottom right of it. I'll try to add more pictures into that as well, but I got this with the, uh, the Buffalo in terms of with the trade, so that is really uh, interesting. You know, it's, it's a high-in-demand coin, and people are starting to uh, really collect these. And the 1972 is probably second in line for the most collectible double die uh, scent of the series. So uh, check your check your scents uh, once in a while because sometimes you might run into something that's uh, worthwhile and worth you taking out of circulation. Uh, you know, most of these, this is not really uh, a weed scent, so people don't really look at these. They actually overlook these. So just something for you guys to, to understand and uh, look out for. Last but not least, I wanted to show you guys uh, a few more things here um, that we bought. You know, we ended up buying a few cat bus dimes. Ended up buying a few CC dimes here. Um, those have been going pretty well as well. And then we bought this whole dime as well, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but overall, uh, it was a fantastic trip. I really did enjoy it. Um, gave me a time to get some fresh air out of the house and find some awesome uh, inventory for you guys. So. Without further ado, let's cut it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did enjoy our video, please leave a like. It supports our dream. You want to comment your thoughts? We like your thoughts. What do you think about the coins? What do you think about what we had to say? And subscribe. you got to join the community. We're just, I mean, we're the best ones on here, let's be honest. And why do you want to subscribe? You don't want to miss an episode. I mean, we got great coins coming out, great information as a dealer coming out. Do all those things and we'll see you in the next episode.